Eco Poetics examines the relationship between humans and ecology, questioning how we define and create our living spaces. It explores the boundaries between our bodies and the world, humans and the other entities and different spaces. The focus of Eco Poetics is on understanding how our sensory experiences, physical presence, memories and moments of reflection shape our understanding of ourselves in the broader context of the world. Eco Poetics challenges enlightenment ideas like science, rationalism and human dominance over nature due to their harmful implications. It criticizes the encyclopedic knowledge deeply rooted in categorizations like classes and species holding this epistemological fallacy responsible for contributing to the current ecological crisis. To address issues like unsustainable resource exploitation, global species reduction and environmental degradation, a shift in perspective is necessary. Gregory Bateson argues that ecological changes stem from a flawed ideology that views species in opposition based on the mistaken belief that the unit of survival in the biotaxonomy is the individual family line. Bateson proposes a new perspective of organism plus environment, introducing different units or distinctions like gene in organism, organism in environment and ecosystem. This paradigm shift encourages conceptualizations of interaction and survival embracing ideas, programs and, un and units within interconnected circuits of complexes of differences as advocated by Bateson. In the 20th century, scientific focus shifted to understanding knowledge at the genetic level. However, in the late 20th and 21st centuries, there is a shift towards recognizing the ecosystem as a more intricate unit of survival. Ecopoetics aligns with this idea combining poetry with science under the eco-prefix. This integration sets eco-poetics apart from theoretical discussions, presenting a unique worldview that combines art and science in an innovative way. Jonathan Bate describes eco-poetics as exploring how a poem can be a creation of a dwelling place. In this context, poetry is not limited to verse, the act of creating a dwelling does not depend on a specific metric metrical form. However, the rhythmic, syntactic and linguistic features often found in verse writing enhance the poetic process. The making of verse is seen as language's direct connection to the dwelling place, responding to nature's rhythms. Eco-poetics should be seen as only as an extension of romanticism Instead of endorsing the romantic idea of reuniting mind and nature, ecopathics aims to place humans within the world. It goes beyond romantic ideals by presenting less utopian visions, often exploring urban perspectives, non-organic metaphors, and a stronger scientific influence of everyday objects. This approach challenges traditional ideas of nature poetry. Kate Sopper warns against an uncritical ecological naturalism, seeing it as a form of social, social conservatism. Radical ecopoetics must navigate this assertion, recognizing the complexities and problems associated with romantic and aestheticized approaches to nature. Though left-wing ecologists may want to reclaim the romantic tradition for progressive purposes, a complex and problematic legacy due to dual nature of romantic sentiments expressing both reactionary and critical views of industrialism.